Hey, welcome everybody. We're so excited uh, to just talk about fasting because I know everyone loves fasting. <laughs> what? <laughs> don't we all love fasting? No, not really true. No. We don't like fasting. I know for me, I don't like fasting, but I love the results of fasting. And uh, we as a church, we're embarking upon 21 days of prayer and fasting. And it's just that it's, it's prayer and fasting because if you're not praying, if you're not seeking the Lord yes. and you're just fasting, it's a dieting. Yes. And so we're not into dieting. We're into um, just seeing the Lord bring breakthrough and uh, going saying to different I need level. a diet, man. Is that what you're trying to talk I mean, uh, after I, Christmas. I need a diet. <laughs> okay. All right. I get what you're we saying. We all need that. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me now. <laughs> um, so we're really excited about uh, these next 21 days and um, just talking about, hey, how, how are we going to make this uh, to the next level um, in our spiritual walk with the Lord? And it starts with fasting. So yeah. um, we're going to start and, off by reading Second Chronicles 7.14, and we're going to use that as a guide for this conversation. Yeah. So Second Chronicles 7.14, And my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So let's just start off with breaking this down. Let's just start off with humble, you know. Yeah. But uh, what? What's the best way that we can humble ourselves? Well, I think that if you look biblically, the prescribed method for humbling is fasting. Yes. And uh, it's not enjoyable, as Adam was saying. And before we went on film, uh, we, we were talking about Matthew chapter 6 a little bit. And I know for many years I talked about the Matthew chapter 6 lifestyle and wanting to live that out in my life and encouraging the congregation to do so as well. But frankly, it's an ideal that was always hard to obtain. Yeah. You know, if I look at my own life, I'd say, okay, y y you know, when you pray, okay, check mark, I got that one. Uh, when you fast, uh, wait a second, what happened <laughs> that one? we'll get back to that. One. When you give, okay, check, check mark, I could do that one too. Yeah. Um, and then it comes to this when you fast part, and for some reason, you know, much of Christianity, not just me person personally, but it seems like we've skipped over that particular step, maybe because we don't like it, maybe because it doesn't feel good. There's probably reasons in the natural that we could talk about as well that make it difficult to right. fast in our generation as well. But uh, it's, I think it's the missing ingredient. And as you look through scripture, it is the prescribed method for humbling yourself spiritually before God. Yep. Um, and it's one that we often avoid. Yep, yep. It's, killing, it's killing the flesh, allowing the spirit of God to then take over in your life. And it's so much easier to hear the voice of God when you're saying, okay, I'm gonna deny myself of fleshly things, deny myself of, of food. But even then, it's so much easier to say no to sin in your life. So there might be people who might be struggling with a particular sin that they feel like, man, I just can't get over. But when you just say, okay, I'm gonna take a moment, take these next three weeks, and I'm gonna fast, and I'm gonna pray, and I'm gonna seek God, then it becomes easy to say no to those things that maybe you've had a difficult time overcoming, right? Yeah. And I would say fasting from the beginning, biblically, is the abstention from food. Yes. You know, I yes. think we water it down a lot of times sure. in modern day Christianity. Oh, I'm going to fast from social media yep. for 21 days. Yep. Yep. That is a great fast, and many of us need to do that, myself yep. included, but that's not biblical fasting, you know? Um, so, I think I always wanted to challenge people to really go for it. And I think there are spiritual obstacles as well as natural obstacles. Um, I, I think if I were the devil, you know, what would I do to inhibit Christians from walking in power? And if fasting is one of those methods that brings us closer to God, humbles us and brings us to a place of power, isn't it just like him to try to get the church to discount that yes. particular yes. you know, method, but also wouldn't it be just like him to get us uh, to have a modern day diet that is full of sugar and carbohydrates and things that actually make it more difficult to fast right. so that the second you do try to go fast, you feel like your whole life is imploding around you and you get a headache and you feel right. terrible and you feel like you're right. going to die. Right. Where if you look historically, when people maybe had some different diets that were healthier in nature, they could actually make fasting a little bit easier part of their lifestyle. Like e yeah. even if you think of modern day health things like intermittent fasting and things that people are on a generally ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. it makes it easier to do that. Right. But he's got us so lapped up on sugar and all the yeah. other stuff that when you do go to fast, it makes it a very difficult and challenging thing. Yep. So all the more reason why we need to maybe go through the pain 
And if that leads to other dietary changes as well that bring us more into alignment with God's word, that that could become a regular part of our lifestyle yes. as a believer, because it does say when you pray, when you fast, when you give, not if, if, yeah. if, yep. right? So maybe we need to think about that during this season and repent if that's something that we need to do and then go with that flow a little better and make it part of not just this 21 day season, which is very important, yep. but that long-term lifestyle that we might have as believers. And I'm glad you brought up the the food, right? Like that's the biblical aspect of it is abstaining from food. And that's what's been really driving on me this this fasting period that's coming up, right? And I was talking to Adam beforehand about, you know, corporate prayer or corporate fasting, right? I was always like, well, you're not going to tell me when to fast. I'm going to fast on my own. You just never fast then. You know what I mean? Like right. if that's the case, you, you just don't fast. But um, or, or the 21 days of not doing Facebook or something other than food, right? But it's really been driven on me this time it's food. That's what it's about. I mean, the first time that there was ever a temptation was with food. Yep. You know, Jesus was tempted with, with food. food. You know, the Israelites, once they crossed the Red Sea, they were tempted with food, right? It's food. It's that's what we're, and you're right. Like Satan's got the Western side the Western world over here, right? The food, the food, the food, that could be a reason why some people don't fast is because it's got that stronghold. I mean, for it's myself, a, well, there's a you know, it's, with it's the, it, isn't there? I yeah. mean, when people are struggling and having yeah. a, difficult day or whatever, Christians, they may not go to alcohol, but then they'll go to, to food. food. They'll go to yep. uh, that cheeseburger from McDonald's, which makes you feel absolutely terrible. But in the moment, <laughs> it'll do something to make you, it's a stronghold. Yep. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Um, but also like when you're preparing for a fast, I think it's really, really important too, as well, begin to kind of clean your body. So like, as you're listening to this, we're starting on, on Sunday. If you listen to this on Thursday or Friday, um, man, start, saying, I'm going to drink a lot of water. I want to eat yeah. healthy. Uh, so that when you do go into the fast, like you're talking about, you're not getting these incredible headaches uh, that will come on because of the junk that we've been eating, right? And it'll be a lot more tame, I'd say. And right? we, I would just add a caution from the beginning. One of the things that I would share is that there can be medical disclaimers and yes, this kind of a thing, yes, but sometimes yes. we use that as an excuse too yes. at the same time. But right. um, I know last year at this time I had come from, you know, being having open heart surgery and right. it came into the time of fasting. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have fasted. That wasn't practical for you to try to get back in. So there's a reality of that aspect yeah. of it. But I was listening, um, Vladimir Sadchuk, uh, Pastor Vlad from Hungry Generation, yep. was talking about it. And I think a lot of people do try not to make people feel guilty. Again, this isn't to guilt people into doing it at all either. This right. needs to be between them and God. But we like to find comfort in food. Um, all of us are guilty of it. And in Christianity, we don't call that a sin. We'll call out sexual immorality. We'll call out other things. But we don't call out, you know, an idol is anything that stands between us and God, right? And sometimes it can be food. Um, I assure you, the average American, if they abstain from food for a period of time, you will not die. I have enough fat here to last me a good <laughs> yes. month at least. Yes. You know, there's there, but water on the other end. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit before we go yeah. about some of the safe ways, and we have some resources to give you yeah. um, about that as well. But uh, you know, it is about food. I mean, you know, it really it is. is. That's the the big big thing here. Yeah. The thing is, too, if we don't if we don't humble ourselves by fasting, God will find ways to humble us. Yeah. And I much Truth. rather humble myself through fasting and allow the Lord to work on me, spiritually speaking, rather than being humbled in other ways, which can be really painful. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. And that leads us yeah, like under a scalpel. Yeah. You don't, yeah, that, 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 you don't, you don't want that, you know, yeah. like no. you don't want to hum be humbled yourself by that way. And you're talking about, uh, it leads us to, it's not about just fasting though. Right. Like we've been talking about fasting and fasting, but it's fast and pray. Right. There's the aspect of it's not just fasting and, and then you're out, you're on a diet at that point. There's prayer that has to happen with that as well. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, this, this weekend, um, I feel like the Lord is calling us to literally, we've said this already, literally make journey a house of prayer yeah. and there's opportunities we're doing corporately, but then personally you have to do that too. Like I, I one of the most powerful things, uh, in my, that I can remember for me fasting, um, was the last time I, I did extended fast. Remember at some different points, man, I'm, I'm like, man, I want to eat food so bad right now. You're going to battle that. You're going to have those, those things. But I came before the Lord. I said, Lord, more than anything right now, Lord, I just want you more than food. I just want you. And my flesh may be saying otherwise, but my spirit from deep down really just wants the Lord. 
And I'm saying from the Lord, from my spirit, maybe not my flesh, but my spirit, Lord, more than anything else right now, I just want you, which is a really powerful prayer to pray. I saw breakthrough happen. I, I saw um, just God do things in me personally with my relationship that I don't believe would have happened unless I would have taken the time to really pray that prayer. So um, it's it's a challenge. Man, yeah. We're, we're uh, uh, if we're fasting um, during lunchtime, man, go and pray. During dinner time, go and pray. Like spend this time to really, like uh, this passage in Second Chronicles says, to seek the face of God, to pray, yeah. um, and you're going to see breakthrough happen you're, in your life. You'll get, you know, when you're fasting, you get hungry, but those hungers go away after you know three days or so. Then it's a craving. You know, your yeah. your mind takes over at that point. Yep. But when you're praying and when you're reading the Word and you're filling the Spirit Man up, right then. You know, now you're getting hungrier for God at that point. You yeah. know, like the more you feed yourself that way, which is opposite in the natural, right? Like right. the more you eat in the natural, you don't get hungry, right? right? It goes away. But right. um, if you're not feeding yourself spiritually, that hunger goes away. We have to allow the spirit to take over yeah. and to lead us. When you look at when Jesus was led into the wilderness, it says the spirit led him to the wilderness, oh, man. right? And then he fasted for 40 days and then he was tempted. Why was he able to overcome? Because the spirit was with him, right? That's a huge um, passage right there, too, that you're talking about. That's, you know. It, well, in Jesus, too, like he said, I don't, I, I'm not going to make any decisions. I'm not going to go where my father is not leading me to go. Like, right. and so the he was being led by the spirit into the wilderness. And so we need to, as we're approaching uh, fasting, we need to be led by the spirit yeah. into this fast and not just be saying, Man, I'm going to. Uh, give up food and I'm going to make it a, and, and then hope yeah. it works out. Right. Yep. We have to be praying and, and prepared spiritually for prepared also by eating healthy before we go into the fast so that we are successful, able to hear from the spirit of God. Right. Yeah. I love that you brought, I'm sorry. I love that you brought that verse up. Whee! Um, cause you can find it in Luke four where Jesus is going into the wilderness. Right. Um, but it's, what you're saying is he was full of the Holy Spirit in verse one, you'll see, right? This is the very first thing he did after he got baptized, or before he did anything else, right? right? Into the wilderness, and he's full of the Holy Spirit. But what's really big is in verse 14, uh, when he comes out of there, it says, and Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, yeah. right? Yeah. What happened in between being filled with the Spirit and then having the power of the Spirit, right? Yeah. Prayer and fasting. Yep. Yeah. That's what happened in the middle Love of there. That. You know, that's the big point right there. So. Amen. And well, I would just go well. back to some of the practical aspects, like how do you incorporate prayer into what you're doing? Adam made a couple of hints there. Um, you know, maybe substitute if you're not a morning prayer, you know, use that time that you would have been eating breakfast to pray or the lunch time. You could use that as an opportunity to pray. There's corporate opportunities to pray at 830 in the morning. Is it eight or 830 on Saturdays that you eight guys o'clock on Saturday mornings. eight o'clock on Saturday mornings? Come on up and join the team yeah. that's up here praying at uh, before service on Sunday mornings before service. There's a, a prayer meeting that occurs at that time. Come on up a little bit early. Be a part of that. We're instituting Wednesday night prayers that are coming up as well. Will yeah. that be at 7 p.m.? PM on Wednesdays, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays during the course of the fast and beyond. Those are corporate gathering opportunities in addition to what you might do individually. And when you hear 21 days, don't be intimidated by that. For the beginner fasting, that's probably not practical, right? I mean, so you can maybe adjust your diet and do the Daniel fast and some other things that you'll see in the resources to last you the 21 days. But I know for me, like some of the ways that I mixed it up last time was maybe it, I was capable of fasting for three days and then hey, after that, I went and just fasted during the day and I would eat at night only. Um, and then if it was harder later in the in the season of that, I would go ahead and do more of a Daniel fast or a, a shake type fast or things like that. But make food the primary element of it. You could do other right. things like we talked about, like Facebook and things, but this is between you and God. You shouldn't right. be guilty if you if you fail for a moment and get back on the horse. Yeah, for sure. um, you shouldn't feel like a spiritual, I've got to be a spiritual superhero and try to knock out 21 days. If you've never done a fast beyond a day or a couple meals, 21 days would be a, a tough transition. Yeah. In fact, I, I think in life, I've only met two or three people who have done between 21 and 40 day fasts in, the, in my lifetime. So that's not for everybody. That's a deep season with God to get to that place. But what a great starting point this year. Use this as a way to yeah. begin to adapt yourself to that Matthew chapter six lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I mean, practical speaking, if, you know, different types of fast throughout it. Uh, and you can kind of plan that out and pray about, you know, what is the Lord leading me to do? We, we've we kind of put it in this in a book that 
uh, we'll put it in the in the post here too of uh, types of fast and and uh, just practically speaking. So you have a total fast abstaining from food and water, which should be no more than three days yeah. because your body will shut down. Like you if you no feel water, you will die. if you feel called <laughs> you to do that, I've never I've actually never done a fast like that abstaining from uh, water too um, ever. Right. So, but if you feel called to do that. Man, God bless you. Go for it, but no more than three days. Uh, liquid fast, abstaining from food, but drinking water, juices for a specific period of time. Uh, that's actually the way I plan on fasting for this 21 days is doing liquid. And um, for me, uh, I feel like it's not as practical maybe in a um, society we live in with how busy we are and work and everything to uh, not have some kind of nutrients. And I do believe the Lord can supernaturally carry you through. But yeah. like when Moses fasted for 40 days, he was on top of the mountain. He didn't have any work he was doing. He didn't go anywhere, right? Yeah. When Jesus was fasting for 40 days, he was in the wilderness. Elijah was carried supernaturally um, by the Spirit, right, through his fast. And so uh, for me, uh, a liquid fast, uh, I can still do. So practically speaking, for me, what I like to do, you might get some pointers from it, is um, I'll do like a bulletproof coffee in the mornings, if you're familiar with that, um, because of the... The fat that's in it will help sustain me. I'll do juice uh, for lunch, um, and then at nighttime drink some drink some bone broth or chicken broth, and of course I drink lots of water. You need lots of water no matter what type of fast you're doing. It yeah. cleanses your system, yeah. right? Um, and then as well, like when you're doing a fast, because the headaches will inevitably come on. Like it's really smart to take some sodium, put some sodium in some water. Yeah, um, because that will help with the headaches. Your body needs that to absorb water. I'm no doctor by no means, right. <laughs> but I've I've read that and it, and it from helps. my experience, it definitely does help. I actually take some uh, magnesium uh, salt and potassium pills when I'm because uh, there's minerals in ketosis. In it, yeah. There's minerals, yeah. yeah. Um, so liquid fast or just be a vegetarian and do the Daniel fast for 21 days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is it leads me to the next one, a partial fast, <laughs> drink water, eat vegetables, which will clean your system too. Um, yep. And uh, then the Daniel fast and then TV, social media, uh, sustaining from technology for um, specific period of time. So I will, my family will be doing that uh, together on top of uh, myself doing liquid fast and the kids will do right. social media. Like all of us need to do well, social, social media, media but YouTube. TV, all that kind of thing. So, and again, don't um, feel guilty. Like if you can't make it all the way, you know, do yeah. as the Lord leads and just get better each day with it. Try to yeah. just grow. This is a season of growth, not guilt. Right. And, and I think uh, fasting is like a, it, to me, it, you can look at it as also like a training tool, right? Like it's training your, your spirit, yourself to abstain from things, right. Just to, to abstain from stuff. What a great way with food, right. To, to train that body up to be able to abstain from stuff. Because if you do fail at it, like you say, right. It's food. Eating food's not a sin in in itself, right? So you just get back up and, and and do it again. You know, if you went three days, now you can go four. You know, if you went four days, now you can go five. And what's that um, verse Paul says? Like I buffet my body and bring it into control. You know, he's talking about food. Yeah. I mean, and that yeah. one, like I beat my body into submission. Yeah. I think it says, lest I, because he knew for him in some way that would lead to sin. He goes, lest I actually like yeah. ruin all that I've accomplished by not fasting. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And we often skip over those verses. Yeah, and it's it's that's what's been put on me a lot this fasting time. You know, for taking control over the the food aspect for me, right? Like. Um, I'm not a skinny guy, so you know that's the that's where we have to take control over that. Don't let the king's stomach take control over Amen. you. You know what I mean? It's powerful. Yep, yeah. yep. killing the flesh yep. and allowing the spirit yeah. in operation yeah. in your life. So at, at any point, I mean, you're going to reach a point to where you do feel weak. Romans eight twenty six. Likewise, the spirit helps us in our weakness, mm -hmm. and that's what you do when you're feeling weak. You say, "Man, Holy Spirit, just help me in this situation." And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit just responds when you pray that prayer with an authentic heart and mm, allow yeah. God to work. I just want to talk about motives real quick, right? So uh, the primary motive, right, for biblical fasting is to draw closer to God, right? Yep. And your motive has to be that, right? That's what the motive of the fast has to be. Not a diet, not to do this better, that better. It needs to be to draw closer to God during this time. Yep. I mean, if your yeah. motives are in alignment with God's word, there's nothing wrong with coming to, into your fast with a goal or a purpose too. No, like maybe there's all. some big yeah. things that you're believing God for in your life. And, you know, you can petition him through intercession yeah. during that season for those things. Um, but it, it, you know, I think 
God often chided the Pharisees and the Sadducees about doing some of these external things mm. to act cool. So if you're doing real good on your fast and you see one of the brothers or sisters from the church walking out of five guys, you know, don't go get on them, you know, at that particular <laughs> moment. <laughs> We're not better than them. You know, like right. that's not what this is about. Yeah. You know, our motive truly has to be to seek God and Lord, I want to draw closer to you yep. during the yes. season. Would you use this as an opportunity for me to not hunger and thirst for the things of the world, but hunger and thirst for you as a deer panteth for my wa- for the water so my soul longeth after thee that's the motivation that we would love to see in that you know yep so before we pray second chronicles 7 14 we'll read it again if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves so humble uh, the best way to humble yourself is through fasting humble themselves and pray we're not dieting we're praying and seek my face and then i believe this is in sequential order hum humility Pray, seek my face, and then turn from your wicked ways. Here's the result. Then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. And we need God to move in our church. We need God to move in our cities, in this country, in the world. And I believe that the Lord is really just calling us to position ourselves for that end-time revival that is coming. And, um, man, uh, this is a great way of just starting the year off giving it to the Lord, killing the flesh, and allowing him to um, just take over. Right? Amen. God take Amen over. with that. So well, let's pray. Yeah. Well, Lord, as we've looked at your word today, as we've examined our own hearts in light of it, as we've studied these scriptures together, Father, I just thank you that you've given us a prescribed method for humbling ourselves and drawing closer unto you. Lord, we do repent for the sins in our lives. We repent for not taking your word seriously at times, and we ask you for favor and direction during the course of this fast. For those who are praying for breakthroughs, like the people of Israel were during that time and that season, they needed a breakthrough through. And the remedy was to humble themselves and pray. And guess what? Just as in Exodus, your word says, when they humbled themselves and prayed, you heard their cry and you answered. Lord, would you answer prayers during the season? Would you have revival start in our hearts personally that would lead to a corporate revival as a church, that would lead to a citywide revival in Jacksonville, that would lead to a national and worldwide revival that would be ushering in your soon return. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to participate in that. And we look forward to these 21 days of more intensely seeking you. May this not be the end when we approach the end of those 21 days, but may it be the beginning of a walk for the people of Journey Church in a Matthew chapter six lifestyle. When we pray, when we fast, when we give, when we make the kingdom of God our primary concern, guess what? Your word says you will take care of all our needs. So we lay them at your feet. We lay our sins at your feet and we say, Lord, we want more of you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So um, there's a digital copy of our 21 days of prayer book that you can 20 days of fasting book that you can grab here. There's a link under below as well. Um, Also, this Sunday, we're starting uh, a new series, Revival Ready. We're talking about birthing, building, and sustaining a move of God and believe that, man, we're going to learn how to do that during this, this series and see God move uh, this next year. So, man, we cannot wait to um, start this fast and just see God move in our lives personally and corporately here at the church. So we love you guys. God bless you. See you Sunday. God bless.